have had requests to do our vegetable soup, which is a very easy recipe. So also in this video, you will see a recipe for our homemade cornbread. So let me show you the ingredients for the soup. Uh, this is like a probably about a half a pound or three fourths of a pound of hamburger meat that's already been browned. We used it last night when we made some nachos. So we're just going to use that leftover ground beef. Of course, if you don't want meat in your vegetable soup, you don't have to even add the meat. I've got a can of uh, sweet peas that is undrained because I'm going to use that juice that's in there. I've got some salt, some pepper. I've got a, a bag of steamed vegetables, just the small bag, uh, the 10.8 ounce bag, matter of fact. I've got some better than bouillon beef base, some minced garlic. On this cho uh, chopping board, I've got a small onion chopped up and these whole white potatoes. I went ahead, the juice is in the can still, but I went ahead and sliced up the potatoes. That way I'd, there wouldn't be, I don't like real big potatoes in my soup. And we got some green cut beans and a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, which we will also be adding probably almost a whole can. We'll tell you exactly how much when we do it of uh, water to that uh, can of tomatoes. And now we're going to get it put together for you. Okay, we're going to start by first. We're just going to add the frozen vegetables. And then we're just going to start adding the onion and the potatoes that we've uh, already got cut up and diced up. And actually, the only thing that's not cooked in this meal right now is <laughs> it's the uh, potatoes. And of course, if we, uh, if you want the ground beef or ground turkey, uh, and you haven't already got it cooked, you would need to probably brown it. And I would probably would have browned the onions in there with the meat too. But the onions, we're going to cook it long enough to simmer it and get all the, as Liz says, marry all the flavors together anyway. So now we're going to add the, the liquid from the potatoes. And then we're going to add the green beans in the liquid. And the English peas, or we, I call them English peas. The pan, a can says uh, sweet peas, so. And then we're just going to add the uh, cooked meat. Like I said, this would be, if you would make it in at home and didn't have the beef, you would cook it with the onion and put it in there after you drain the grease off of it. Or just leave this part out. And then we're going to add the tomatoes. And we're going to add, we're going to start with a can of water and see if we need to add any more or not. Here's the can of water, and we're going to get, uh, looks like we're going to need two, because you really want the vegetable soup, because it's going to, we want it to simmer for at least probably a good hour. We're going to bring it to a boil, then let it just simmer and get all those flavors together. So you want quite a bit of liquid. You don't want it to be real tomato in, uh, too, too much tomato flavor. And now we're going to add about a tea, uh, probably a teaspoon of the beef bouillon base better than bouillon beef base it is i'm telling the bat and the chicken one i keep it all the time it just adds such a flavor to your beef dishes and then we're going to add a five tablespoon of garlic we like garlic you know seasoning is going to be a course to your to your uh, to your liking we're adding a tablespoon because we do like garlic and then we're going to add the salt and pepper Okay, we're going to start off with like a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. And we can always add more. At, well, you can always add more, but you can't take it out. So we're going to add, there's a teaspoon of pepper. And if we add any more, we will be sure. <laughs> he might have, we may have got just a little bit more than a teaspoon. But that's okay. That's what goes good about this vegetable soup. It can be done so many different ways. If you don't want to use canned uh, vegetables, you can use... Uh, frozen vegetables and just add more water to your tomatoes if you want to uh don't use you don't like onion you want to use some uh or you do like onion but you don't want to chop up onion just use the minced onion that you buy in the store i mean this is more or less throw in the pot cook meal i and that's the reason why i was like at first when people were asking me to share i was going well I, it's not i mean i i just 
this is how my mother taught me to do it, and I've added some things to it because she didn't have the better than bouillon base. And she almost actually just put the hamburger meat or whatever meat just in there raw and cooked it. And I don't like that that puts too much grease in it. So I like browning my meat first. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add it to the stove. We're going to bring it to a boil. And then we're going to simmer it for at least an hour. And we'll be back in just a little bit. And we'll be making some homemade cornbread. Okay, y'all. Now for the cornbread. So we're going to start with the dry ingredients. We need one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of cornmeal, one tablespoon of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of salt. We need one fourth cup of vegetable oil, or I'm using canola oil, and we need one cup of milk and one beaten egg. Also need your oven preheated to 400 degrees. I use a 10 inch cast iron skillet and I've got it in the oven. Uh, we, we'll have, we're going to put the oil in it and then we're going to put it in the oven while we mix it up and hopefully it will be hot enough by that time. If not, we'll continue it on top of the stove until it gets hot enough. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to get this mixing up. <laughs> I, I guess I'm wrong, when I picked up that mixing bowl, I didn't uh, think about what Keith's going to be helping me too, but oh well. And we got, he's added a cup of cornmeal. Now he's adding the cup of flour. Okay, and so now we're going to add the row of the dry ingredient, which is the baking powder and the salt. And he's going to just kind of whisk that kind of together. And you can add the egg to the milk and mix it up, you know, and, and that, it, but I just never have. This is how I always have. Just, I just added the egg. The beaten egg into it and then we added the milk and then once we get that done we'll check on our pan now we're going to check the pan and see if it's hot enough or if we need to continue heating it a little bit on top of the stove I bet you we're going to have to continue heating it a little bit and he's going to test it. And how you test it, you just give a little bit of cornmeal, just a very tad, and see it's not sizzling. So that tells us it's not, it needs to be a little bit hotter. So we're going to turn the uh, burner on and get a little bit hotter. Okay, we're just going to test it again. Oh, yeah, see it sizzle? That tells you it's ready. Just a little information. This, this cast iron skillet is the one that I got for my mother. And it was, I used to make cornbread in it as a child. Now what we do is we add the excess oil into, you'll hear it sizzle probably, to the cornbread. And then we'll set that back on top of the stove, the, the skillet back on top of the stove. Because then we're going to put some cornmeal literally on top of that before we pour the cornbread in. Now we're going to put some, just a, we're going to sprinkle some cornmeal on top of the pan, the hot pan. And this gives it, this just gives the corn mat, uh, cornbread a crust. And then we're going to add the cornbread itself. And we're going to put it in a 400 degree oven. And we're going to cook it for 20 to 25 minutes till it's golden brown. And we'll be back. So we're going to test it and see if it's done. Whoop, it's done. So there it is. There's your cluster view. we got to let it cool down for a little bit. And our soup is a simmering away. And it should be ready. So we're just going to turn it off and let it all kind of cool down a little bit. And then we'll do a taste test. Just wanted to show y'all what the crust looks like. How that, how that cast iron skillet cooked it. Oh, awesome. Okay, here we go. Here's the taste test. We wrote the soup. Now, usually we put the cornbread inside the soup, but for your taste test, we're going to do it separately. Look how thick that cornbread is. Oh. Okay, baby. How's the seasoning? Good. Does it need more salt and pepper, or do you think the teaspoon of each was enough? It was enough. Okay, thank you all.